All right, praise the Lord, amen. All right, our final for the series tonight is Christmas presents, and we're going to be looking at first a series we began with, Christmas presents in your heart, one of the greatest gift, amen, the presence of Christ in your heart is always the greatest gift. Then the second uh, Wednesday, we look at uh, the Christmas present in, in your home, the gift of love. Last week, we looked at uh, uh, in your world, the gift of joy, and tonight we're going to look at in your future. Everyone here has a future, whether it be a day or 10 days or 10 years or 30 or 40 years, but we have a future, and that is the gift of of hope. Everyone can have the gift of hope. And when we have the gift of hope, certainly we have the presence of Christmas in our hearts and in our lives. And we're going to be looking at that. Take your Bibles, if you would, and open them to Luke's Gospel. Luke chapter 2. All, everything's been coming out of Luke's Gospel. Luke gives us the best account of the Christmas story. And the most detailed of the Christmas story is found in Luke's Gospel. And so we've been spending a lot of time in Luke in our messages all around the Christmas. And tonight we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 2, verses 30 through 32. This is part of Simeon's prophecy uh, where he wanted to see the Lord. And so we're going to be looking at that. And I pray that you'll, uh, that you'll uh, take a look at this it's with me. And uh, let's read it and then we'll have prayer and get into God's Word. Let me thank all of you that are watching by Facebook Live with us right now. We're glad you're with us. And thank you for letting us come into your home tonight and worship with you and worship with us here at West Marion. And hope you have your pencil and pad and study guides out. Uh, You can go online and download it uh, with us as well. And we trust you did that prior to getting started. And so let me invite you to come out and be with us this Sunday morning at 1030 and for our morning worship service as we're looking at Christmas, a revival at Christmas. The Sunday school hour, we're going over He That Overcometh, a tremendous series we've been in, and we may be finishing it up this Sunday, I'm not sure, but you don't want to miss it, and so we'd love to have you with us. All right, everybody in Luke chapter 2, let's begin reading in verse number 30 here. This again, Simeon is talking now, and you remember his prayer request is that he could see the Lord before his death. And that was his request that he had made of the Lord. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people, Israel. Father, we thank you for this evening. Bless our time in your word now. Father, may you multiply it. May it grow in our hearts and lives. May your Holy Spirit be our teacher and our guide now. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and praise the Lord. All right, well, let me uh, get my little clicker here going for you. And I should have had that up. I'm a little behind time. So, all right, here we go. And in the future is the gift of hope. That's what we're looking at. And there's the scripture passage that we read this evening. And we're going to get started as we take a look at hope. You know, the world wants hope. Especially right now, our world is looking for hope. Matter of fact, we're, we're almost to a place worldwide, globally, that the world right now is willing to accept anybody that can come on the scene and straighten this mess out. And yet, be it God, be the devil himself, it doesn't make any difference, even with Israel, to straighten out the mess that this world is in, and this stage is ready for the coming of the Antichrist, who's going to offer that hope and that peace in the beginning, but we know it's a false hope, it's a false peace, but nevertheless, that's how he's coming. And right now, the world's looking for that. That's why I think we're so close, church, to the rapture of the church, because everything is geared up and pointing towards the second coming of Christ. And, 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 and it's all there. And it's, it's interesting how it is that it's set up for that. And uh, we just thank God for that. And in light of all of that, what's going on. And, and Jesus reminded us that when we see all of these things globally happening simultaneously around the world, he told especially the nation of Israel to look up for your redemption draweth nigh. 
And I believe we're, we're right on the threshold of that. And so, uh, who know? And of course, we know, as we believe, as pre-trib, pre we believe that the, there'll be a seven-year period of tribulation before the millennial starts in the second coming of Christ. And then prior to the tribulation will be the, the first part or phase one of his second coming, which we call the rapture of the church. And that's the snatching out, the catching away of the bride of Christ when the groom comes to take his bride home. And I believe we're, we're living right on that. And that the way things are happening, you know, if this was only happening like here or one other place, ah, eh, you know, not so much. But, you know, it'd be one thing, but when we see it affecting globally, the whole world, uh, it, it's simultaneously at one time. I mean, this is a... It's phenomenal in one sense of the word because it just strengthens us as believers that we're that much closer to the coming of Christ. And so we're looking forward to that. So if the world needs hope. You know, you got that song, you know, the world needs hope. And, and, and the secular song that sang about that, what the world needs now. And, and, and they need hope and they're looking for that. Well, I want to assure you tonight there's hope in Jesus Christ. There's hope in the gospel. There's hope in the word of God. And, and you can have that presence. This is what's neat about it, church. We can have that presence in our heart year-round. doesn't have to be just at Christmas time. doesn't have to be just for the month of December. Even though we're celebrating the spirit of Christmas, we can have it year-long. And so let's take a look at it. The gift of hope came to us at Christmas. The gift of hope came to us at Christmas. The, host, the world then was desperate in need of a Savior. Israel was in desperate need of a Savior, of a Messiah. Uh, Rome was even, is the way they were. The whole world was. And God sent that hope in the form of a baby called the Lord Jesus Christ. That night in Bethlehem, Simeon's prophecy was fulfilled. All the Old Testament prophecies concerning his birth was fulfilled that night. And God sent us the gift of hope. And so that's why we can have hope at Christmas now. Let's look, at, look at the little song. We sing it all the time together. Follow along with me. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth. Now the dark streets he's referring to in his song were the streets of Bethlehem that night. He's talking about the dark streets of Bethlehem, a dark time under the tyranny and oppression of Rome and all that was going on in the taxation of Rome. And, you know, they were dims and so, you know, amen. And, uh, and so the, uh, uh, the everlasting light. Now look at this. The hopes and fears of all the years that speaks of future to come are met in thee tonight in Bethlehem. Matter of fact, that song was written in 1868 by Philip Brooks after a trip to the Holy Land. If you want to know where that came from. So let's go down and take a look at it. Jesus is the hope of the world. Can I get an amen, church? Come on. I know we're a little bit down tonight, a lot of sickness, and, and it's Christmas, close to uh, pre-Christmas Eve tonight, <laughs> okay? Uh, and it's coming, but hey, Jesus is, a, now keep this thought in mind. Hope came that night in Bethlehem. What came that night in Bethlehem? Jesus. So he's referred to as the hope, and Jesus is the hope of the world. So keep that thought in mind as we go through that, because Simeon said, and his name shall the Gentiles trust. Because isn't that what Simeon said? He would be the light that would lighten the Gentiles. And so you see, folks, that's our hope. We're Gentiles. And our hope showed up that night in Bethlehem. Because without that hope, we would be without hope. We would have no hope. We would be lost for all eternity. But thank God that hope came to lighten the Gentiles. And those of us that are saved have experienced that light in our lives, and we've seen that light, and that's the light we have to offer to those around us. That's the same light that gave that blind man sight. I don't know who that man was, whether he be sinner or God. It makes no difference. All I know, I was blind, but now I see. And so praise God for this hope that the world can have, and that's the only thing we have to offer the world, is hope. Washington cannot offer us hope. The government's not going to be able to offer us hope. The so-called elect isn't going to be able to give us hope, that's for sure. 
All right, and so if Jesus is the hope of the world, if Jesus came to Bethlehem that night, then Jesus is the source of hope because he is the hope. So you see, if you want to have hope in your life tonight, and you want to have that presence of Christmas, because remember, hope came at Christmas, right? Jesus is the hope. So if you got Jesus, you're going to have Christmas all year long in your heart. Because that's the presence of Christ. We don't just have him in December. We just don't have him tomorrow night and, and Friday. No, we have him year round. He's the source. Listen to what the scripture says, Romans 15, 13. Now the God of what, church, talk to me, of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound, and the word abound means to grow in what? In hope. And how do you grow in hope? Now who's hope? Jesus is hope. So you see the joy and peace in believing that you may grow in Jesus. How do we do that? Through the power of the Holy Ghost. And you see, we don't need that just to December 25th. We need that year round. See, we need it year round, folks. We ought to be growing in in Jesus year round through the Holy Spirit. Why? Because I have that hope in me. I have the presence of Christ in me who happens to be the hope of of glory. All right, let's take a look at a third one. As soon as we come into a relationship with Jesus, what happens? We have the hope. See, that's why he's the hope of the world. See, that's why we're going to speak about, and, and, and Sister Carol's going to be sharing that, you see, it's not religion, it's not a church, it's not a denomination that's going to give you that hope, and that it's a relationship with Christ. And there's a lot of good people and a lot of religious people, but that's not going to get you saved. See, it's what Jesus Christ does for you. For the hope, say that with me, for the hope which is laid up for you where? Now, why is it laid up in heaven? Because where is Jesus? He's in heaven. All right, not only that, but he's in your heart, yes. Where have ye heard before in the word of truth? The gospel. Now, where did you hear about this hope, this person of Jesus? It's through the gospel. You heard it through the word, which is the gospel, which gave you that hope. And again, folks, this is every day, 365 a year. So there's no reason for believers not to have hope. There's no reason for us not to have hope in the future, because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. Amen? All right, so, so that's my future hope. Okay, all right, let's look at fourthly here tonight on this. We grow in our understanding of this hope. We grow in our understanding of this hope. Let's look at the verse in Ephesians 1.18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know, what are we to know? What is the hope of his calling? and what the riches of glory of his inheritance in the saints. So you got inheritance coming, man. All right, you got glory that's coming to you. All right, and this is hope is in your calling. How many of you have been called tonight? If you've been saved, you've been called. And that's your hope. So you see, it doesn't matter what happens in a few months from now, or a month from now, or January 20th. My hope is in Christ. My hope is in heaven. My hope is in my inheritance, you see. No matter what happens in the world, don't lose hope because Jesus is still on the throne. He's still in control, and he's the source of your hope. Now, if you go around and don't have no hope, then maybe it's because you don't have the source. Because if you got the source, you're going to have hope because he's hope. And so we go there. So let's take a look at this hope is a confident expectation. This hope is a confident expectation. All right? How many are expecting it? Amen? All right, let's see what Hebrews chapter 6 says. In Hebrews chapter 6, verses 18 through 20. That by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie. Say that it's impossible for God to lie. How many of you believe that? It's impossible for God to lie. Now, churches can lie. Preachers can lie. Okay, rabbis, priests, monks, Buddhists, popes, doesn't matter. They can lie. Religion can lie. Denominations can lie. But God cannot lie. It is impossible for him to lie. 
it's impossible for God to lie, watch it, that we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge. How many of you fled for refuge for Christ? See, your hope is in Christ. He's your refuge. For the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil. Who entered into the veil? Christ did. So because he entered into the veil, he's your anchor. He's your hope. Amen? Okay? Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So we have this wonderful hope that's, that's confident in the expectation which is before us. How is that all made possible? Because, you see, he entered into the veil of the Holy of Holies. And because he may, after the order of Melchizedek, because only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies, into the presence of God once a year. But Jesus, because he is God, and because he went into the Holy of Holies, because he can go into the presence of God, his Father, anytime he wants, and therefore because I'm his son and he's my dad, I can go into his presence anytime I want to. Fantastic. All because of this hope that we have in Christ. Amen? All right, so let's take a look at it. All right, and those were the verses I read. Which hope we have is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us entered even Jesus. And he's the forerunner that entered in because why? He's our high priest for how long? Forever, and he's after the order of Melchizedek. And that's a wonderful study in itself of Melchizedek. I mean, it's really fantastic. And I believe personally it was the pre-incarnate Christ. Okay? Before his, uh, and, and so, but God has given us two unchangeable things to build a confident expectation. He's given us two unchangeable things to build that. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at them. Whatever we face, we can go to him for refuge. Remember, he's our refuge. This hope is. So no matter what we face tonight, church, whatever your circumstances are, whatever your situation is, whatever you're facing, Whatever COVID brings, whatever the government brings, because, see, we will face it one way or another. But I can go to my hope, who is my refuge. All right, let's look at another. Whatever we face, we can hold to Him and hope that lies before us. Amen? Whatever we face, we can hold to Him and the hope that lies before us. Now, I don't know what you're going to face this year. I don't know what all of us are going to face this year. But I also know we may not have to worry about facing this year because we may not be here. Friday's coming. I'm going to be a little disappointed if the trumpet doesn't sound. Alan keeps getting on me. He says, you quit saying that. I'm not saying no dates, brother. I'm just trying to give you some hope. What's wrong with hoping that Jesus would come Friday? Huh? Man, that's my hope. That's my expectation. And what did, what did Jesus say? I'm coming. And I'm coming quickly and suddenly by surprise. Amen. Behold, he cometh in the clouds. That's my expectation of my hope. And God cannot lie. There you have it. So, get ready. We may be out of here. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor. Now, again, what did I say in the beginning? Who's our hope? Jesus. So, in other words, this Jesus is a strong and trustworthy anchor. I mean, believe Jesus is a trustworthy anchor. The anchor holds, amen? Though the ship's been battered, the anchor holds. All right, look at number five. This hope brings us into the very closest presence of God. Because, you see, Jesus is Jesus, and if I'm in His presence, then I'm in the presence of God, because He is God. Doesn't get any better than that, does it, church? So, you see now, don't lose hope. Don't let doom and gloom news and fake news and bad news and sad news, because, see, I'm going to be speaking on that at Super Channel 55. Fake news, lying news, I'm going to bring you some good news. Good news. I bring you good news. 
which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Church, and those of you that are watching and listening on Super 55, that's good news. Jesus is already there for us. Amen? Jesus is already there for us. Now, how many believe that? Then why are we worried about everything? Why are we anxious about everything? Why are we scared about everything? We're supposed to have hope. Jesus is my hope. He's my anchor. He doesn't lie. He's got everything under control. Hey, even if a nuclear bomb hits the planet, I'm out of here one way or the other. Whether Jesus calls me up or I get blown up, doesn't matter. I'm out of here. Vaporized in a moment. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, glory's going to be exciting. All right, so we, we looked at that, amen? All right, so here we go. How many of you believe Jesus is your hope? How many of you believe he's strong and trustworthy? How many brings you into the presence of God? All right, how many believe that he's your refuge? How many believe you can hold on to him? All right, well, let's, tell, let's see. Here we go. You ready? Let's go down through these real quickly. When we are tempted, how many of you have been tempted lately? Anybody been tempted today? Huh? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. There's your three areas of temptation. Okay? God promised us an anchor. Who's that anchor? The anchor holds. Amen? He's my anchor. So even in temptation, God promises me an anchor. Okay? When we are discouraged... Anybody been discouraged lately? Anybody gotten discouraged over the last 10 months? Oh, come on now, let's be honest. God promised us an anchor. All right. When we are afraid, anybody been afraid? Last 10 months, there's been a lot of fear. Especially in the beginning, everybody was living in a lot of fear. God promised us an anchor. That's why I wanted you to sing that tonight for me, sweetie. I know it was a little too late to get you ready for it. When we feel back into a corner, anybody been back in a corner? I can see by some faces you have. God promised us an anchor, okay? When we want to give up, God promised us an anchor. When circumstances overwhelm us, God promised us an anchor. Are you being overwhelmed by circumstances tonight or have been recently? Or they may come soon. God promised us an anchor. Now remember, the anchor is our hope. The hope is Jesus, and God cannot lie. All right, you got that? When our loved ones encounter hard times, God's promised us an anchor. I mean, you have some loved ones tonight that are going through some hard times. Anybody like that here tonight? Raise your hand. Okay, you got loved ones that are experiencing some hard times. God promised us an anchor. See, take this and share it with those that are saved that are going through these things because it's going to give them hope. See, that's what we want to do. We want to give people hope. When our friends turn against us, God's promised us an anchor. Anybody had any friends ever turn against you? Huh? Yeah? We've all probably been there. Had that happen? God gives us an anchor. Amen. Here we go. So we see that our hope, we have this confident expectation that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 6, 18. Here's another one, Romans 5, 5. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Now, think about Paul wrote that. But if Jesus is hope, what's another thing that Paul said in Romans? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto God, unto salvation, to them that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Amen? So in hope, and Jesus maketh not ashamed. We don't need to be ashamed of Christ. We need to share Him and speak up. 
And every opportunity we get, take this opportunity because it's in our Sunday school we've been learning that we're going to stand before God one day and we're going to give an account of what we did with the opportunities God gave us. Whether we took them or didn't. I said, so here's an opportunity that God's giving both of us to speak to three 0.7 million people. The message of hope. The message of Christ. So you pray for us. You do. I'm serious. We're asking you to. It's one thing to stand in your own church and pulpit and have fun and preach to your people. But I'm going to be in a studio with three people and televisions on a little platform made up to look like a, you know, preaching set. And they're only allowing three people in there because of COVID. So it's going to be the me, the cameraman, the lighting man, and the sound man, and that's it. And so, and you got to talk to that camera. And what you got to do is you got to, and you got to in visual and, and visualize that there are almost four million people watching you. Because they're going to be promoting this, commercials, advertising, it, and everything. Not just to me, but to all the preachers he's inviting. But just the fact that we have that opportunity. And so, I, and I'm just praising God that we do. That we can share the gospel and share the truth. Because the world is blind. And they need to see. And the only way they're going to see is Jesus has got to touch their eyes. So praise God. Let's not be ashamed of the hope that we have in Christ. Share our faith. Share our gospel. Take the advantage of every opportunity because the time is limited. Wouldn't that be something that could be my last message that I preach and the trumpet's about to sound. And God knows that. And it goes out over the airways. Plus, too, you got to understand, they live stream that, too, at the same time around the world. So you're not just speaking to 4 million people in Central Florida. You're speaking to the world. What an opportunity. What an opportunity. So let's not blow it. Let's take it. Share the love of Christ. I don't have time to fool around and play with it. I'm here for one purpose, Claude, and that's to preach the gospel. And that's what we're going to do. Because people need to be saved. You can preach the other stuff after I leave, but right now we're going to preach the gospel. Amen. And just I, I'm just thrilled and thankful that he called and invited us uh, to do this. I mean, I feel honored. You know, I mean, uh, this is a, a, just a, another stepping stone and mile step in the life of our ministry. And don't forget, we represent our church. And that's our church that's going to be speaking. And again, folks, it's not about the messenger. It's about the message. It's about the message. Well, let's look at it and wrap it up for tonight, okay? Jesus brings hope through. Jesus brings hope through. Let's look at three wonderful things that Jesus brings hope through. Are you ready for this? Amen. Well, I've got to move on here. Jesus brings hope through past promises. Past promises. Look at the hope that he brought. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, speaking of the Old Testament, okay, were written for our learning, that through patience and comfort of the Scripture, we might have hope. And what was written before time, the whole Old Testament, is about Christ. It's about the coming of the Lord, the Messiah, about Jesus, about God's salvation, and all that was written for our learning so that you and I might, through patience and comfort of the Word of God, have hope. And what is hope? Jesus. So we could have Jesus. Amen. Past promises that God made so we could have hope. Present help. How many of you need some present help today? You need some hope? Look at here. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. 
for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. And we speak of his countenance, we're speaking of his presence. Amen. Present help. God is our refuge and strength in the very present help in trouble. Amen. So he helps in our present. That's why we come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may ask for help in the time of need. Future glory. Present help. Past promises. Present help. Future glory. For now we see through a glass darkly. But what? what now, folks, we're looking right now. We see through a glass. It's dark. Okay? But then face to face. I know in part. See, we know in part right now. We don't have all the knowledge. We don't have all the, the answers. We don't have all of everything. We just know in part right now. But then I shall know, even also as I am known. It's coming a time we're going to know it, folks. We're going to be in his presence. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. What tense? Now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. See, that's my blessed hope. I'm looking and listening for the sound of the trumpet, for the shout, because I'm going to meet my glorious Lord in the air, and that's, that's here it is, right there. And we shall see Him as He is in all of His glory. And the Scripture says we're going to be like Him. Woo! What has He got? Glorified body. What are you going to get? Glorified body. His body glows. We're going to glow. Going to glow... Because the Shekinah glory of God outshines the sun. It's brighter than the sun. It's brighter than the stars. And during the tribulation period time and judgment, God's going to shake all the stars out of heaven. And he's going to replace them with new stars called soul winners. Don't think so? Read Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3. They that be righteous shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars. Woo! Glory be. Amen. Daniel 12, 3. You read it later. All right, future glory. So we're below. Praise God. Jesus brings to, uh, so we looked at the gift of hope came at Bethlehem. All right, this hope is a confident expectation. Jesus brings this hope through past promises, present help, future glory, and lastly, uh, tonight. His hope, your confident expectation, is all found in the person of Christ. It's all found in Christ tonight. Amen? All right, let's read what Romans 8 has to say for us tonight. In Romans chapter 8, it says this, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time... See, folks, we're going to go through sufferings. Nobody's going to escape this planet without some type of ailment and pain and suffering. You're just not going to. It's there. But for the present time, are not worthy to compare with the glory. What did we just got through talking about? The glory, our future hope, the glory that we're going to have when we see Him and we're going to be glorified. And that's not going to even compare to the sufferings we're going through right now, which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest, here we go, back to the expectation of the creature for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into this glorious liberty of the children of God. Amen. For we know, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, that is creation now, the animals, the plant life, the plant care, all of that that's groaning right now. But not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Oh, what a day that's going to be when my Jesus I shall see. Amen. And this corruptible shall put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality. Oh my goodness, folks, it's coming. That's my hope. The body's racked with 
pain and it hurts and it aches and we go through all kinds of things and problems, but there's coming a time when it'll all be over. When Jesus comes and that's my blessed hope. Oh, praise God, a new body. On the resurrection morning, when all the dead in Christ shall rise, I'll have a new body, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Amen? Oh, Quartet's made that very popular in 1971. Dates us back a little bit ways. Oh, praise God, we're going to have new bodies. Amen. I hope it's not resurrection morning. I hope it's rapture morning. God will rescue you. God will rescue you, my dear friend, tonight. God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. All right, are you with me? God personally knows you and all that you face. Did you know God knows you better than you know yourself? God knows you. He knows everything you're facing, everything you're going through, every pain, every circumstance, every uh, situation. God knows it. But you see, I can have all this blessed hope. My expectation. Why? Because God can not lie. Now everything and everybody else will lie to you. The devil is the father of lies. The Bible said from the beginning. Because he, there is no truth in him. Oh my goodness. Fourthly, God is not disinterested in your struggles. Did you know that? God is interested in you to the point that he has every hair counted on your head. Now some are losing some faster than others. But God knows that. So don't bother counting them because he's got them counted. Amen? You are never alone, church. Never, never alone. Now we're going to close it out with the last phrase of stands one of old little town of Bethlehem. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. That blessed hope. Praise God for that blessed hope. In your future tonight, you have the gift of hope. In your heart, you should have the greatest gift. In your home, you ought to have the gift of love. In your world, you ought to have the gift of joy. And in your future, you ought to have the gift of hope. Amen? When you have those four working together, then you have the Christmas presents in your life year-round. Merry Christmas. Father, we thank you for tonight. We bless you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the encouragement of it. Thank you that we can have hope Hope unspeakable and full of glory. In all these tiring, trying times that we're going through, these dark days, days of uncertainty, unsettledness, there is hope. There is hope. And it's in the person of Christ. How we do praise you and we thank you. Father, help us to burn these little messages and that we're going through this month to have the spirit of Christmas year-round, the presence of Christmas in our lives year-round, revival of Christmas in our hearts year-round. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and glory for it. The wonderful name of Jesus, amen and amen.
Thank you.